it's Patrick Hatzel from IntensiveCareHotline.com where we instantly improve the lives of families of critically ill patients in intensive care so that you can have peace of mind, real power, real control and so that you can influence decision making fast even if you're not a doctor or a nurse in intensive care. This is another episode of Your Questions Answered and in last week's episode I answered another question from one of our readers and the question last week was My 80 year old father is in intensive care with myeloma. The intensive care team has asked me to sign a DNR or do not resuscitate order and I refused. What are my options? You can check out last week's episode by clicking on the link below this video. In this week's episode of Your Questions Answered, I want to answer another question that we get asked quite frequently and the question this week is How long can a critically ill patient stay on ECMO? Now, if your loved one is critically ill in intensive care and requires ECMO, which stands for extracorporeal membrane oxygenation and in essence is a bypass for either heart failure, for heart attack, cardiomyopathy, cardiac arrest, cardiogenic shock or it can also act as a bridge to an LVAT or an RVAT which is support for the right or the left heart with a ventricular assist device and it can also, ECMO can also act as a bridging mechanism to a heart transplant. ECMO can also be used for lung failure, for example for ARDS, cystic fibrosis and also as a bridge to a lung transplant. You might also be wondering how long your critically ill loved one can stay on the ECMO machine if he or she falls into one of those categories for heart failure or for lung failure. It's also a fair and reasonable and very important question to ask and many of our readers want to know about it. First of all, your critically ill loved one has either developed heart failure or lung failure in some form and therefore they require the ECMO therapy. ECMO for lung failure is also being referred to as VV ECMO or Vino Venus ECMO and ECMO for heart failure is being referred to as VA or Veno Arterial ECMO. The difference is simply that the big cannulas being used for ECMO are either going from one of the veins to the artery in ECMO for heart failure and in ECMO for lung failure the big cannulas for blood extraction and blood return are both from vein to vein. In any case, you and your family need to keep in mind at all times that ECMO is a relatively new therapy in the bigger scheme of things and has only been around for the last 10 to 15 years in intensive care. It is therefore a relatively new therapy. Therefore, you could expect that there's still a lot of testing and quote-unquote trial and error going on given that it's such a new therapy in the intensive care or critical care world. If your critically ill loved one is in ECMO, is on ECMO for either heart failure or lung failure, the purpose for both ECMO variations is generally speaking to give the sick organ, either the heart or the lung, a rest and let them recover. In either VA ECMO for heart failure or VV ECMO for lung failure, the purpose of either is to let the heart or the lungs rest and let the ECMO machine take over the function of either the heart or the lungs. That can be achieved by having the gas exchange taking place in the ECMO machine. That means oxygen is being delivered into the blood via the ECMO machine and carbon dioxide or CO2 is being removed via the ECMO machine. In either VA ECMO for heart failure or VV ECMO for lung failure 
your critically ill loved one is most likely being ventilated and in an induced coma. There is the option, especially for critically ill patients in heart failure and therefore on VA ECMO, to be breathing spontaneously and without the ventilator, therefore being awake and not in an induced coma. This can be the preferred option, especially given that ventilation and induced coma with, comes with massive side effects and is generally speaking a high risk. However, being awake and on ECMO can also be challenging as patients are awake and fully aware of their often difficult situation. This can have other psychological challenges as patients may get depressed and or panicky about their critical situation. It could get particularly challenging and not only from a morally, ethically and clinically point of view if treatment would be withdrawn on an awake patient. If your critically ill loved one requires ECMO for lung failure or VV ECMO, it's less likely that your critically ill loved one is being awake and off the ventilator. Whilst this may be possible in some critically ill patients, it's less likely to occur on VV ECMO for lung failure. It's also more likely that if your critically ill loved one requires VV ECMO for lung failure, that they may end up with or already have a tracheostomy. A tracheostomy may be required if a prolonged weaning of the ventilator is expected. In a critically ill patient on VV ECMO for lung failure, a prolonged weaning of the ventilator after ECMO has been discontinued is often likely and therefore a tracheostomy necessary. You can also check out this article if you're clicking on the link below this video how long should a patient be on a ventilator before having a tracheostomy. In any case, a tracheostomy is often the better option for your critically ill loved one if prolonged ventilation is required as the ventilation therapy can be easier tolerated with a tracheostomy. Having said that, if a tracheostomy is required for either VV ECMO for lung failure or VA ECMO for heart failure, the procedure for a tracheostomy might get delayed as both variations of ECMO require high doses of heparin, which is a blood thinning medication. And therefore, the risk for severe bleeding if a tracheostomy was to be performed is increased. Finally, in either VV ECMO for lung failure or VA ECMO for heart failure, the length of time a critically ill patient can stay on ECMO depends on the severity of the heart or lung failure and can also depend on other factors such as age, pre-medical history or the comorbidities your critically ill loved one may have. As a rule of thumb, two to three weeks is probably the longest I have seen for a critically ill patient to be on either VV ECMO for lung failure or VA ECMO for heart failure. The risks being on either VV ECMO for lung failure or VA ECMO for heart failure tend to be pretty significant with large cannulas being inserted into the body and other risks such as ventilation, sedation, induced coma, inotropes, immobilization often put a strict time limit on the high-risk therapy that is ECMO. If two to three weeks don't give the heart or the lungs enough time to recover from their initial disease or weakness, in heart failure an insertion of a VAT device which stands for ventricular assist device would be the next logical step or even a heart transplant. If your critically ill loved one suffers from lung failure and requires prolonged and high risk VV ECMO therapy and can't be weaned off the machine, a lung transplant might be the next possible step. Again, in either VV ECMO for lung failure or VA ECMO for heart failure, your critically ill loved one would have to 
undergo a weaning process so that either the heart or the lungs can recover and can take over their normal or physiological function and then the ECMO can be gradually weaned and then removed. In VV ECMO for lung failure the weaning process would go hand in hand with chest x-rays and with checking of arterial blood gases to check and monitor the adequacy of the gas exchange in the lungs. In VA ECMO for heart failure the weaning process goes hand in hand with more formal weaning studies such as an echocardiogram of the heart and or a toe. A toe is usually an ultrasound that's done via the mouth through the esophagus down in the direction of your loved one's stomach and they do an ultrasound through there. An ultrasound of the heart I shall say. A reduction of inotropes would be necessary as well. You should also be having some strategies in place if the intensive care team suggests to withdraw treatment and to withdraw the ECMO therapy on your critically ill loved one as you need to be prepared for any challenges in intensive care. Sometimes the intensive care team suggests the withdrawal of treatment or the withdrawal of life support as being quote unquote in the best interest of your critically ill loved one. The reality and the fact of the matter is that if you are not prepared for those situations you will have no peace of mind, no control, no power and no influence. If you also don't understand what's happening in intensive care behind the scenes and if you don't understand how the intensive care team is making decisions that often go way beyond your critically ill loved ones diagnosis and prognosis you will have a very hard time to have peace of mind, control, power and influence. You can also check out this related article the five questions you need to ask if the intensive care team wants to withdraw treatment or wants to limit life support or wants to issue an NFR or not for resuscitation or DNR do not resuscitate order. You can check out this article if you're clicking on the link below this video. You should, in any case, continue doing your own research whilst your loved one is critically ill in intensive care. You should also not take anything the intensive care team is telling you for face value. You should continue to look for strategies how you can proactively manage the intensive care team that when it comes to difficult in challenging situations that you have bargaining power, peace of mind, control, power and influence. How do you do that and how can you have peace of mind, control, power and influence whilst your loved one is critically ill in intensive care? You get to that all important feeling of peace of mind, control, power and influence when you download your free instant impact report now by entering your email below. In your free instant impact report you learn quickly how to get peace of mind, real power and real control and how you can influence decision making fast whilst your loved one is critically ill in intensive care. Your free instant impact report gives you in-depth insight that you must know whilst your loved one is critically ill or is even dying in intensive care. Sign up and download your free instant impact report now by entering your email below. In your free instant impact report you learn how to speak the secret intensive care language so that the doctors and the nurses know straight away that you are an insider and that you know and understand what's really happening in intensive care. In your free report you will also discover how to ask the doctors and the nurses the right questions. Discover the many competing interests in intensive care and how your critically ill loved one's treatment may depend on those competing interests. How to eliminate fear, frustration, stress, struggle and vulnerability even if your loved one is dying. You get five killer tips and strategies helping you to get on the right path to peace of mind, control, power
power and influence in your situation. You will get real world examples that you can easily adapt to your and your critically ill loved one's situation. How to stop being intimidated by the intensive care team and how you will be seen as equals. You will get crucial behind the scenes insight so that you know and understand what's really happening in intensive care and how you need to manage doctors and nurses in intensive care and it's not what you think. Thank you for tuning into this week's Your Questions Answered and I'll see you again in another update next week. Make sure you also check out our blog section for more tips and strategies or send me an email to support at intensivecarehotline.com with your questions. This is Patrick Hutzel from intensivecarehotline.com and I'll see you again next week in another update.